good one. There's one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yes. Yeah! Woo! Yes! All right, what's up, everybody? Hella Bass here. And today, I want to talk about something that I'm super passionate about. Dock fishing and dock rods. And how to select the best dock rod for you. And in the end, I'm going to show you my two favorite dock rod setups. And you can make a choice on what you want for your dock rods. Thanks for tuning. If you like you see, consider subscribing for more content that will help, help you catch more bass and suck less, but let's get into the video. Docks are one of my true loves. I consider it a strength of my fishing. It's something I'm passionate about. It's something I love to do. It's something that I've done really well in tournaments. And I think it's something if you get really good at, it's something that you can put into your arsenal and be a big part of your fishing game. These techniques and rods apply much more to just docks. It could be wood, trees, overhanging objects, any kind of visible shoreline structure. You can use these techniques and these rods for, and obviously rods that are dock rods are used for a lot more other techniques as well. So I've got two setups that I like, one spinning rod, one casting rod. I think that's important. You need two rods because you know what? Hey, day in and day out, I love to throw a bait caster. I love catching them on a jig. I love skipping and pitching my jig around docks and shallow cover. But there are times that a finesse approach is required. Skipping an eco rig, a wacky Senko, a Texas rig Senko, things like that, lighter options, Finesse presentations will get you bites at certain times around docks, and there's just no denying it. When the times are tough, you got to finesse up. Even though we don't want to, you need two setups for fishing docks. I'm going to put links down in the descriptions for all the rods, reels, baits, and things like that at the end of the video. A lot of these rods that I'm going to talk about, the reels, the actions, you can get them at multiple price points. So I may have invested a little more than what you want in your rod and reel, but I will list all those options out. When you find the one you want, you should be able to find that action at a price point that fits your budget, and you'll be all set. I'm going to start with my spinning rod setup. What I'm looking for in my spinning rod is a medium fast action. I like a seven foot rod. That's very comfortable to me. You definitely could get by with a 6'6", six, 6'8", six, 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 depending on where you're fishing, what you're comfortable with, the type of boat you have. But I like a seven foot medium fast action rod with a fairly large three to 4,000 size spool reel. Uh, I'm going to put normally 20 pound braid on my dock setup. When I'm finesse fishing, drop shot, things like that in open water, a lot of times I'm going to use 10 to 15 pound braid, but I like a little more heft around docks just because you never know when you're going to get around sharp braces, things like that. 20, even sometimes 30 pound braid, but the 20 pound to me is the best balance of castability and strength for making as long of skips as possible with this setup. Bigger spool on the reel. Yes, it's a little heavier, it's a little bigger, but in the end, this bigger spool allows the line to come off faster and makes better casting, line manageability is better. Invest in a three or 4,000 size reel, you won't be disappointed. For me, I use a Dobbins Fury 703. It's actually a very affordable rod. I think most of these rods come in at 110 to $120. You can find discount codes, get them right around $100. It's a great rod, great value. With that braid, this has the adequate strength a lot of the times you don't need the ultimate sensitivity when fishing around docks with braid because one, you can see your line most of the time. You can see the strikes. Most of the time I'm throwing some kind of a, a wacky rigged uh, stick bait or a Texas rigged stick bait on this setup. Depending on the cover, how much vegetation, uh, the fall rate I need, I will go Texas rigged or wacky rigged stick baits most of the time, but there are other options. You can throw just about any weightless or lightly weighted soft plastic, shaky head, things like that, anything you want small jigs, all great. But this is where you want something small. You need to be able to make a presentation way back in there, like culverts, docks, things like that, to get these fish that are pressured and maybe they won't eat that jig like you want them. Along with that 20 pound braid, I'm often fishing a small fluorocarbon leader. Uh, if the water's really stained or the cover's really heavy, I will go straight braid. And that's one of the reasons I use a green or a dark colored braid, because oftentimes I will go straight braid to my setup. But in clear water, finicky fish, things like that, I will do a small fluorocarbon leader. Oftentimes heavier than you'd think, 10, 12, maybe even 15 pound leader, uh, depending on the cover, the size of the fish and things like that to the hook or the small jig. This setup, great for spotted bass, large mouth, small mouth bass, super versatile rod, uh, real setup. And obviously you can use this for casting Senkos, other things beyond dock fishing, but this is my main setup for dock fish. Recap, Dobbins Fury 703 SF spinning rod, uh, I've got this paired up with a Daiwa Fuego. I believe this is a 4,000 size reel. 
99 bucks. Great reel, just enough drag for this application, uh, big spool. So all together, just over 200 bucks for this setup and, and you're all set for the spinning rod setup for dock fishing. All right, moving on to my second setup and my favorite, favorite setup for dock fishing, my bait caster, which essentially is my jig skipping setup for fishing around docks and shallow cover. You can throw light Texas rigs, things like that as well, but I think nothing beats a jig for its skippability, uh, the low maintenance and efficiency. Uh, I can catch so many fish, never have to fix my soft plastic. Uh, just, it's really versatile, it comes through the cover, you get good hookups and you catch big bass on a jig. I really recommend learn how to skip a jig and get good at that around boat docks and shallow cover. So my setup again, once again, a seven foot rod. This particular rod is a mag fast, heavy action. So I like a much heavier action for my bait caster setup. One, because I'm often fishing straight fluorocarbon. Some people like braid around docks. Me, I'm a fluorocarbon guy most of the time because I like the feel of it. I like the castability of it. Uh, I fish a lot of clear water in Minnesota, so most of the time I'm going to be fishing fluorocarbon. You can definitely go straight braid or braid to fluorocarbon leader. You'll need to adjust your rod setup appropriately depending on your setup. So for me, it's a Dobbins Extreme 705C bait casting reel, seven foot mag heavy. They make this rod in a Fury, they make this rod in a Champion, a Sierra. I'm pretty sure you can get it at just about any price point. So whatever your price point is, a 705 is a great rod. Seven foot gives me all the length and leverage I need on the hook set to control a big fish around dock and shallow cover. The seven foot allows me to make super accurate uh, flip casts, pitch casts, uh, sidearm casting. I know it's more accurate. Sometimes I use a bit longer rod, but day in and day out, this is what I'm best at and most efficient with. Pair that with a seven to one or eight to one reel. This one particularly here is a Daiwa Tatula SV and a seven to one. The Tatula SV has great features for castability and line control, uh, anti-backlash. It's a really great reel. But you can get by with any good reel between $100 and $200, I think, uh, on this setup. 20-pound fluorocarbon, most of the time I'm using something like Seaguar and Vizix or Sunline Sniper. Get yourself a good quality fluorocarbon for this application. You want something that's fairly strong and abrasion resistant. You don't want to go cheap when you're busting big fish around shallow cover and really hard hook sets around shallow cover. Most of the time I'm going to be flipping a 3 8 or half ounce Bass Tech Tungsten Jig with a speed craw or a menace craw or some kind of small low profile jig that doesn't create a lot of drag when I'm casting or skipping the bait. A compact presentation that still puts off a fair amount of vibration to get the fish's attention, gets a lot of bites. Plus, if you get something with a little bit of kick in action, then you can swim that jig around cover, back to the boat, kind of make the most of your setup and the time on the water. You can be swimming a jig, flipping a jig, uh, and just cover all the water columns as you go down the bank. Just a reminder, we went super fast through a lot of content. Any of these products, all will be listed down in the description below. If you want to find any information, just click down below. One more bonus tip. If you want to get better at fishing shallow cover and docks, the key to becoming a better shallow water angler is casting accuracy and putting your bait where the fish are and where their other anglers can't. Whether it's in your basement, in your living room, in your driveway, or your backyard, practice pitching, flipping, skipping with all your rod setups get better at casting, the more times you can put your bait where the fish are, the more fish you're gonna catch. So that's a tip. Even when you can't get on the water, can't get in the kayak, can't get on the bank, you can be practicing your casting at home. If you enjoyed any of this, consider subscribing for more videos in the future. As always, if you wanna to continue to catch more bass and suck less, make sure you watch this next video right here. And until next time, tight lines.